Hello everyone, this is Professor Jeff Wilkerson at Luther College, once again bringing you what to look for in the night sky, this time for the week of February 15th, 2021. Uh, but this is going to be, in some ways, for the whole year, some of the stuff that we're talking about here, and certainly for the next few weeks ahead. Uh, but this week in particular, there's a couple of nice things we want to point out. I hope you had a chance to go uh, look at uh, last week's video where I encouraged you to watch Mars moving from Uranus in the direction of the Pleiades, and it has closed noticeably since last week on the Pleiades. So really interesting to see Mars moving in this direction toward the Pleiades star cluster. Get your binoculars out and look at it, but you don't need your binoculars. Just use your naked eye. If you haven't had a chance, go back, watch that video now, and, and get to learn this region of the sky. And the board's a little bit messy here this week. We've got a lot of stuff. We're adding to what we had last week. So we're going to return to this region of the sky and talk about Mars moving from Uranus toward the Pleiades. You go out after dark. I don't know. Let's say 7 o'clock right now. Uh, Mars looks south and maybe a little bit west of south. And, and Mars is going to be the big bright red object there. It's going to be the brightest reddest object in that part of the sky. Hopefully you can't miss it. When you look at it, Pleiades will just be up north and, and to the east a little bit from there. Uh, look like a little fuzzy patch without your binoculars. Go find it with your binoculars. What's going to happen this week is the moon's going to slide through here. Uh, that's what, one of the things that makes this a little bit busier. And so one of our guide stars that we used last week was Mencar in the constellation Cetus. And I've added some other stars here this week that are hard to see. Uh, but right here, uh, a little sort of a quadrilateral, we talked about that last week, uh, of stars here around Mencar. And so uh, Mencar is in, in Cetus right now. Uh, this star, uh, Alreshka, is in the end of a, a Pisces, sits below the great square of Pegasus. And Pisces has this sort of V-shape, this, this, this wide V-shape. And this is the, the point of the V, the tip of the V right there. And if you go out on the 16th, uh, uh, you should see uh, the moon, uh, a nice slender moon, only about a quarter full, sitting right above Alreshka. So go out, see if you can find the moon and, and, and the star right there. And the moon's going to track across this direction. By the time you get to uh, the next night, one night later on the 17th, again, I don't know, 7 o'clock at night, 8 o'clock at night, a uh, good time to go out and look. Uh, the moon will have slipped past Uranus and will be sitting above this quadrilateral uh, in the constellation Cetus, uh, not too far from Mencar. So you'll have Mars, the moon, and Mencar, and the moon will be about one-third full by that point. Uh, the next night, uh, on the 18th, the moon's going to be over 40% full. It'll have slipped past 40% full. It will be sitting just below Mars. They'll make a, a great pairing in the sky on the 18th in the evening. So if you only do one thing this week, do it all. Don't do it all. Do it all. Don't just do one thing. But if you only do one thing, no, no, do it all. Do it all. Oh, we're caught in a loop here. Uh-oh. Um, if, if, you, if you're going to do one thing, go out on the 18th and see Mars and the moon there together. Um, and see if you can use it to find the star Mencar. If you can, and on the 17th, you can do the same thing. If you slip on down the distance from Mars to the moon on the 17th, and on down about that same distance, but, but slide just a little bit, you'll come to the star Myra. Now, Myra is going to be a very hard star for you to see, and you're not going to know you're seeing it when you see it. You're going to look at it, and you're going to say, oh, uh, there's a bunch of faint stars here. You're going to need your binoculars. You take your binoculars and look at this region of the sky, and you'll see a whole bunch of faint stars. Myra was the first variable star known. Uh, it was discovered as a variable star in the year 1596 uh, by David O. Fabricius. And, and, and David Fabricius noticed this star was getting brighter and dimmer. It gets a lot brighter and a lot dimmer. And we're headed toward April. We're headed toward its dimmest point, which makes it really hard to see. But if you start looking at this region of sky, if you want a long-term project, and I know you want a long-term long project, right? you got to want that long-term project. If you want it, go out and start sketching the stars in this region. Use these as your guide stars to take your binoculars and look at this part and just start sketching the stars. And do that over the next six or seven months. What you're going to see, so, so Myra is a star that gets brighter and dimmer. If you plot how bright it is as a function of time, it's a pretty clean light curve. Uh, I, I, I like this star. I like this star because in the field of view, the research project we do has a lot of stars that are similar to Myra. Uh, but, but Myra is a nice clean star. It gets brighter and dimmer and brighter and dimmer like this. But the time it takes to go from brightest to brightest 
or demist to demist is almost a year. So over the course of six months, it goes, we're headed toward demist right now. Uh, uh, six months later, we're going to be headed toward brightest. And so out in here, so by the time we get to fall, if you can still be watching this region of the sky, it's going to be getting a lot dimmer. So over the course of the summer, it's going to get harder and harder to see as we lose nighttime in the, in the summer. Um, and, and by the time we get to fall, you might be wanting to look at it in the early morning. But we'll, we'll circle back to this. You just, if you make a sketch, if you if you have a nice long-term project to say, I'm going to sketch the stars in this room, I'm going to take my pad outside and sketch what I see. I think you're going to notice by the time we get through summer and toward fall and next winter, uh, Myra being a lot brighter than it is now. You'll see it. You'll see a star, and that star is going to get fainter and fainter and fainter over the next uh, several weeks, and then it'll start to to. to to get brighter and brighter. It may even disappear for you. It may be so faint you can't see it, but then you'll see it start to dig back out. So there's your long-term project. Do it for a year. Okay, okay, do it for three years. Just keep doing it. Just say, I'm gonna return to this and I'm gonna make this sketch. I'm gonna get to know this region of the sky. It's gonna be my old friend when I look at it. Okay, back to this week. Uh, you, that's your project, long-term. Uh, by the 18th, Mars is, is sitting right above uh, the moon and the moon is just over 40% full, probably closer to 43, 44% fall on that evening when you're looking at it. Remember, Mars, is, that's your other long-term project, medium-term project, short-term project. Watching Mars move toward the Pleiades. The Pleiades, it's actually moving this direction. It's got to slide below the Pleiades in the next couple of weeks. So keep watching this. By the next night on the 19th, uh, Mars is going to be, uh, not Mars, the moon. The moon is going to be sitting here between Aldebaran, the bright orange star in Taurus the Bull, and the Pleiades. And you got the V of the Hyades right here, that star cluster. That's also going to be a great view on the evening of the 19th when Mars has made it over here just below the Pleiades um, and, and, and between the Pleiades and the Hyades and looking toward the orange star out there, Barad. So watch the moon this week. Uh, 16th over here uh, at, the, at the edge of Pisces and getting ready to move this direction above Cetus. Use it to find Cetus, see if you can find uh, Myra that way. And the nice star min car here on the 17th. And then on the 18th, it's right under Mars. On the 19th, it will be over here between uh, the Hyades and the Pleiades, two open star clusters in Taurus with the bright orange star Aldebaran. And that's a great week of observing, folks. If you can get out there and do that, uh, this will be fantastic. Uh, hopefully, where I am right now recording this, my goodness, has it been cold to go out and observe lately. And it might be a little better by the time we get to, to, to next week when we're doing this, by the time we get to the week of the 15th. So anyway, good observing, folks. Clear skies. Uh, take care. We'll, we'll, we'll come back next week and talk a little bit more about other things.